begin with breaking news, though. Justice Stephen Breyer will retire from the Supreme Court at the end of his term in June. President Biden is expected to make a formal announcement at the White House later this week. Justice Breyer has been on the high court for 27 years. His retirement comes at a critical moment for the Democratic Party. Breyer faced a lot of pressure from liberals to retire while a Democratic president was in office. Mr. Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris had previously committed to nominating a black woman for the role. And Democratic Senator Perry, Patty Murray of Washington is echoing the administration's call. She says, quote, the court should reflect the diversity of our country. Joining us now is senior White House and political correspondent Ed O'Keefe and congressional correspondent Nicole Killian. Welcome. Ed and Nicole, great to see both of you. Ed, Ed let me start with you. The president addressed the news a little earlier. Let's listen to what he said. Every justice. No has the right and opportunity to decide what he or she is going to do and announce it on their own. There has been no announcement from Justice Breyer. Let him make whatever statement he's going to make, and I'll be happy to talk about it later. So, Ed, does that comment from the president indicate the sort of, you know, sensitive position the White House is in? It doesn't want to look like it's pushing Justice Breyer out, wants to make it clear that this is his own decision? Absolutely, that is what this is about. This is a former chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee, who actually was uh, there when Stephen Breyer was nominated and had his confirmation hearing. Biden was chairman of the Judiciary Committee, I believe, back in 1994 when he was put on the court. It shows you how long Joe Biden's been involved in judicial picks. This will be a big one for him. And uh, as, as he said there, there's been no official word from the justice. That is true. Uh, what, what we've learned today is through associates of the justice, who is now saying that he plans to go at the end of the term uh, most likely at the end of June. But the president could, if Justice Breyer signals this in writing or somehow makes it official that he plans to retire at the end of the term, the president could get the ball rolling uh, as soon as, you know, that letter of services or that announcement is made. Uh, and it certainly would seem that the Senate would like to get this done as quickly as possible as well for a few reasons. One, they only have 50 seats plus the vice president for 51. If something were to happen to one of those Democratic senators who happens to come from a state with a Republican governor, the balance of power could shift right away. That is part of the concern, the nervousness that Democrats have had all along. Second, uh, it would allow the Senate to get on to other things in what is expected to be a tricky midterm election year. But the president uh, had said since he was a candidate that he is, plans to nominate a black woman to the Supreme Court, saying it is overdue, uh, that that bit of representation needs to happen. Uh, and that uh, the diversity of the country in that way needs to be reflected on the highest federal court. We should point out, this has been a president who managed to get 40 federal court nominees confirmed last year, and it's been the most diverse slate of nominees put on the federal bench by any president, not only in terms of gender and ethnicity, but in terms of experience. These are people who are uh, former public defenders, uh, others who have served uh, in, in different kinds of roles, not necessarily as local judges or attorney generals or district attorneys, but people who bring more uh, varied experiences, if you will, uh, to the federal courts. We'll see whether that plays out in his potential pick for the high court, uh, but it is expected he will fulfill that campaign pledge. Right, and Nicole, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer tweeted that President Biden's nominee will get a prompt hearing and will be confirmed with deliberate speed, he said. Is Schumer reacting this way because, of course, of previous nominations that were either held up or pushed through quickly by Republicans? Well, I think, obviously, uh, with Democrats in the majority here, uh, that would be their aim, is to move this process along in a swift manner. Obviously, we have to wait for that official announcement from the justice first, and then secondly, for any type of official announcement from the White House as far as who they might nominate. But overall, with respect to reaction that we have heard from Capitol Hill, it, you know, it has been a mix. Uh, many uh, lawmakers so far have been uh, very... Uh, have applauded uh, Stephen Breyer for his, you know, two decades plus on the bench. And as you saw, some senators like Senator Murray uh, really taking that step to say that uh, she supports President Biden's pledge to uh, nominate an African-American woman. Other lawmakers have been a little broader in their language, just saying that this presents an opportunity to present a diverse roster of candidates. Uh, that was uh, the sentiment of Dick Durbin, who had the 
Judiciary Committee, uh, other uh, lawmakers, uh, Senators Kane, Gillibrand, uh, talking about the importance of uh, picking someone who is qualified uh, for this position. So uh, this is likely to set off the <laughs> parlor game that we are used to, kind of when these vacancies arise, as to who might fill uh, some of these seats. Certainly one name that continues to be talked about a lot is uh, Kintaji uh, Brown-Jackson, who is currently on the circuit uh, court right now. She actually su succeeded uh, Merrick Garland, who, uh, of course, uh, went on to become a attorney general. Uh, but she is someone who once clerked for Stephen Breyer, uh, was recently appointed uh, to the bench, and did have bipartisan support. And so what is interesting to note is that uh, in a statement from Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina, he actually suggests that whoever <laughs> the president puts forth, that he may not necessarily support that person. Uh, in essence, he said that he expects Democrats to hang together, and if they do, that they may have to do that without uh, the support of one <laughs> Republican lawmaker, uh, suggesting that that might be him. So uh, he also applauded Stephen Breyer's service as well. But I do think it will be interesting to watch, because as you know, the dynamics here on uh, Capitol Hill have been highly partisan, highly charged, and uh, that usually is the case uh, surrounding uh, not only legislation, but also with respect to uh, these Supreme Court nominations, which get a lot of attention. There certainly has been a lot of uh, bad blood over the years uh, between how Republicans handled the situation when they had vacancies versus now, you know, again, you have a Democratic president in control. So that's why you are seeing Leader Schumer be very uh, forthright in saying that we will try to move quickly on this uh, as the situation presents itself. But Ed, just to be clear, Democrats could push through a nominee on their own without use of the filibuster on this one, correct? And secondly, I want you to comment on how this news got ahead of the announcement uh, from the justice himself. Was this a leak on the part of someone in his staff, one of his clerks, perhaps? We don't know. We simply don't know. And uh, uh, all we know is that this is different than how it's happened in recent history. Uh, there's been the sudden death of justices in the case of Antonin Scalia. There's been formal announcements, usually in the form of a letter from a justice to the president saying it is my intent to step down on a certain or specific date. Uh, then the president makes it known that that's happened or the Supreme Court does and then the ball rolls from there. In this case, it's people close to the justice who've let it be known to others. What is less certain, there is some reporting on this, but we haven't nailed it down as to whether or not the justice may have somehow spoken with or conveyed to the president in recent days of his plans. White House officials aren't getting into that, but it's clear White House officials were aware of this before the news broke, and as were others around town. A few uh, lawmakers who I've contacted wouldn't get into the details of it either, which would suggest that uh, at least some of them knew. Um, can we go back to that list, though, of potential nominees? I think it's important right, that we tick else? through these, um, if you don't mind. Um, uh, uh, Nicole mentioned uh, Katanji Brown Jackson, who serves here in D.C. Uh, she actually succeeded Merrick Garland, who's now the attorney general. Uh, she took his seat. Uh, J. Michelle Childs, who's at the top of that list there, is a federal district court judge in South Carolina, a protege, a favorite of the Congressman Jim Clyburn, who everyone will remember was a kingmaker during the South Carolina 2020 primary, said he endorsed then former Vice President Biden for president in part because of his vow to put a black woman on the court. Clyburn noting he's got three daughters of his own and thinks that it's time to see a woman on the high court. The other two names, Candace Jackson Akawumi uh, with the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals, which is based in Chicago. She won uh, her uh, confirmation just last June. And then uh, California Supreme Court Justice Leandra Kruger, who's a 44-year-old on the high court of the uh, Golden State from the home state of Kamala Harris, the vice president, who, of course, is going to have a say in this matter. Uh, but those are four of what is likely to be uh, a longer list of people, mm -hmm. but four names that have been mentioned in public speculation and haven't been rejected either by the White House or Senate Democrats or others uh, as a potential pick. If you're looking for the most traditional route to take, uh, who possesses that right now and might be a front runner in that regard? It would be Justice Katanji Brown Jackson because she's on the Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia. That is the court from which, again, Merrick Garland had been nominated before his nomination was rejected. Uh, the court where uh, Brett Kavanaugh served uh, beforehand, where Ruth Bader Ginsburg had once served, sort of seen as the second highest court just by virtue of location uh, and the court decisions that it makes or the, uh, the cases it hears on its way to the Supreme Court. So it wouldn't be a surprise to see her come out. Perhaps the most unconventional 
would be somebody like a state Supreme Court justice, Justice Kruger, uh, or uh, Justice Childs, just the Judge Childs, just the fact that she's a district level federal judge and not an appeals court judge. And there's the potential for the president again to make history and to diversify the bench, not necessarily in gender and in ethnicity or race as it would in this case by, by putting a black woman on the court, but also in terms of experience. Uh, we've had very few Supreme Court justices who were not appeals court judges beforehand or a state Supreme Court judge, uh, and, and so potentially he could go that route. Uh, but as you can see on this list, uh, these are women with their own uh, certainly impressive legal credentials um, and have been put into the pipeline, so to speak, by Democrats in uh, anticipation of or the possibility of rising one day to the high court. So we'll see. And Nicole, you just mentioned Senator Lindsey Graham's tweet about Breyer's replacement in which he wrote that if all Democrats hang together, uh, which he expects that they will, they will have the power to replace Justice Breyer in 2022 without one Republican vote in support. I mean, is this normal to assume that the party that's not in power will forever and ever completely reject a nominee? Is this a pattern? Or do you see maybe a window of hope that there is some kind of bipartisanship in the future? Well, I think it depends who is named, number one. But number two, you know, I think the aim is always to try to do things in a bipartisan fashion and, you know, go through the process. But obviously, you know, there is a bad taste left in Democrats' mouths from the situation with Merrick Garland, where he was nominated by uh, then former President uh, Obama. And in essence, you know, Mitch McConnell at the time uh, held up that nomination. And so then, you know, fast forward to when President Trump was in office, former President Trump, and, you know, with all of those vacancies and, you know, the deliberate effort to try to uh, fast track a number of conservative uh, judges to the bench. And so uh, that being said, you know, it's hard to predict. Um, but I think the goal again here, <laughs> as lawmakers try to say, is always bipartisanship. But in reality, that doesn't necessarily happen. And as I mentioned, Mentioned earlier, particularly in this hypercharged uh, political atmosphere that we are in, where we have really seen Democrats, as far as a lot of pieces of legislation, try to do it uh, on their own. And some of that has not necessarily been successful. So will they succeed if they try to advance, uh, you know, Supreme Court nomination solely on their own? Again, um, you know, uh, unclear, but uh, I think time will tell as, again, we see this process play out. And, Lily, real quick, hey. in terms of yeah. Lindsey Graham, it's important to point out he was one of three Republican senators to vote for now Judges Jackson and, just, and Judge Jackson Akawumi just last year. He, Susan Collins, and Lisa Murkowski were the only three Republicans. And folks may remember having watched the Brett Kavanaugh hearing, especially when he tore into Democrats for going after the just, now justice the way they did during the hearings by saying, you know, you're not helping us here. This is character assassination. It's unbecoming of the history of the Senate. And he kept pointing out, I voted for Judge Sotomayor. I voted for Justice Kagan as a Republican supporting a Democrat's supporters or nominees. Um, why aren't you doing that same thing now to help a Republican put his nominee on the court? To me, reading that tweet, what, what Senator Graham is signaling is the days of him helping a president of the other party put his Supreme Court picks on the court are over. And that uh, this White House shouldn't necessarily anticipate that Lindsey Graham would be on board, unless perhaps he chooses Judge Childs from South Carolina, where Lindsey Graham is from. Uh, and it would be a bit weird to see Graham and Republican Senator Tim Scott potentially vote against one from their own state. So uh, that's the, the, the type of politics that will get played uh, in this. There's some home state stuff going on. There's ideology. There's partisanship. Uh, and it's just another ugly fight that will get added to all the other ones going on in this city. And there have been many. Ed O'Keefe and Nicole Killian, thank you for your reporting and analysis on this breaking news.